Hello everyone, let's learn today bony features and attachments of the scapula. Now this is right scapula and as you know it's a triangular shaped flat bone. It is also called as shoulder blade and it is a part of pectoral girdle. So along with the clavicle, the scapula and clavicle together they form pectoral girdle. Now let's see the external features. The scapula has got two surfaces, coastal surface and dorsal surface it has got three borders superior border medial border and lateral border it has got three processes the spinous process the acromion process and the coracoid process and it has got three angles the lateral angle or glenoidal angle the inferior angle and the superior angle now the scapula extends from second rib to the seventh rib in posterolateral aspect of the thoracic wall. Now let's see the individual features. First see the coastal surface. Now coastal surface is facing forward and medially and it has got a depression and this depression is called as subscapular fossa. Now if you see the coastal surface closely you will see three to four oblique ridges running from medial to lateral towards lateral border. Now medial two-third of this subscapular fossa it provides origin to subscapularis muscle and these ridges are providing attachment to intramuscular septa and these septa are providing additional surface area so as maximum number of fibers can be accommodated. So subscapularis is an example of multipinnate muscle. Now let's see dorsal surface. Now dorsal surface is subdivided into two fossa by a spinous process. This is spinous process. So a smaller one is the supraspinous fossa and the larger one is the infraspinous fossa. Now medial two-third of the supraspinous fossa along with the superior surface of the spine provides origin to supraspinatus muscle whereas the medial two-third of infraspinous fossa along with the corresponding inferior surface of the spine it provides attachment to the infraspinatus muscle. Now laterally this supraspinous fossa is in communication with infraspinous fossa over here you can see through a notch and this notch is situated between this glenoidal angle and spine so as the name given is spinoglenoid notch. So there is a connection or communication between the supraspinous fossa with the infraspinous fossa and suprascapular nerve and vessels from supraspinous fossa they pass through this spinoglenoid notch and to enter into the infraspinous fossa. Now let's see borders. First is the lateral border. It is very thick and it is also called as axillary border. Now it extends from the glenoidal angle above to the inferior angle below. Now just below the glenoidal angle the lateral border bears a tubercle which is termed as infraglenoid tubercle and this is providing origin to long head of triceps brachii muscle. Now below to that the lateral border along with the infraspinous fossa it forms a flat bony strip you can see over here. And this flat bony strip along with the lateral border in upper two third it provides origin to teres minor muscle and below there is an oblique ridge you can see over here in the flat strip so below that oblique ridge this portion provides origin to teres major muscle now if you see the lateral border within the origin of teres minor there is a notch and this notch is lodging circumflex scapular vessels and that is going towards the infraspinous fossa. Now infraspinatus fascia it covers infraspinatus muscle and teres minor muscle and the fascia is attached to this spinous process and to entire infraspinous fossa excluding the teres major muscle. So this oblique ridge provides attachment to infraspinatus fascia and in the injury to or fracture to the scapula 
there is a formation of hematoma which is limited to the territory of this infraspinatus fascia now the coastal aspect of the lateral border is very thick and this is behaving as a lever for the action of serratus anterior muscle so during various movements produced by serratus anterior muscle the lateral border which is thick it is behaving as a lever now let's see medial border it is also called as vertebral border because it is related to the vertebral column medially it extends from superior angle to the inferior angle and along its coastal aspect it bears a thin bony strip you can see over here this thin bony strip above and below becomes little bit raised and triangular you can see over here the raised medial bony strip now superiorly the rough elevated area which is broken over here it provides attachment to first digitation of serratus anterior the second and third digitation are attached along this medial strip of the bone and lower five digitation of serratus anterior they are attached in this lower raised area so this is how the eight digitations are attached along the coastal aspect of the medial border now if you see the dorsal aspect of the medial border at the level of the spine of third thoracic vertebrae along the medial border there is a triangular area and it coincides with the apex of the spine so this is the apex of the spinous process this is spinous process and this is the apex so there is a triangular area at the level of third thoracic vertebrae so in the dorsal aspect from superior angle to the point which is related to the apex of the spine this portion provides insertion to levator scapulae muscle the portion of medial border along its dorsal aspect against the apex of spine this portion provides insertion to rhomboidus minor muscle and remaining dorsal aspect of medial border this portion provides insertion to rhomboidus major muscle remember the minor comes first so along the medial border there will be rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major along the lateral border there will be teres minor and then teres major so along the medial border on coastal aspect there is serratus anterior along the dorsal aspect there is levator scapulae rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major all four muscles are inserted so we can say that along the medial border the muscles are inserted just opposite to that along the lateral border there is origin of long head of triceps teres minor and teres major so we can say that lateral border provides origin to the muscles now let's see superior border it is thin and short and it extends from superior angle to the glenoidal angle so this is superior border which is bit broken over here because it is very thin and this is coracoid process so near the root of coracoid process the superior border shows a notch and this notch is termed as suprascapular notch now this suprascapular notch is converted into a foramen by suprascapular ligament and through this foramen the suprascapular now enters in the supraspinous fossa whereas the suprascapular vessels they pass above the suprascapular ligament so this is how the suprascapular nerve and vessels they reach to the supraspinous fossa here the suprascapular nerve will supply supraspinatus muscle and then it enters into infraspinous fossa through this spinoglenoid notch again this notch is converted into a foramen by spinoglenoid ligament now the suprascapular nerve supplies infraspinatus muscle so a single now suprascapular now supplies two muscles supraspinatus and infraspinatus now near suprascapular notch the superior border over here provides attachment to inferior belly of omohyoid now omohyoid is an infrahyoid group of muscle and it is supplied by branches of cervical plexus now let's see angles of the scapula as i mentioned there are three angles lateral angle or glenoidal angle inferior angle and superior angle so let's see first the lateral angle or glenoidal angle 
it is also called as head of the scapula and rest of the portion of scapula is termed as body of the scapula next to the margin of nodal angle there is a constricted part and this constricted part is termed as anatomical neck of the scapula now if you see the nodal angle it is pear shaped it is narrow above and broad below and it is a shallow depression which is in living covered by articular cartilage or hyaline cartilage and that provides socket for the head of the humerus and together they form shoulder joint now above the nodal angle over here there is a tubercle at the root of the coracoid process this is termed as supraglenoid tubercle so above the glenoidal angle we have supraglenoid tubercle and below there is infraglenoid tubercle now this supraglenoid tubercle provides origin to the long head of biceps brachii now the margin of nodal angle provides attachment to a fibrocartilaginous rim which is termed as glenoidal labrum and that increases the depth of the nodal cavity the attachment of glenoidal labrum excludes supraglenoid tubercle now outside the attachment of nodal labrum there is attachment of fibrous capsule and that fibrous capsule is for the shoulder joint above it includes supraglenoid tubercle so as the long head of biceps will become intracapsular whereas below it excludes infraglenoid tubercle so as long head of triceps will become extra capsular now if you see the articulation this is head of the humerus which is again smooth and that is covered by articular cartilage and these two are articulated like this to form the shoulder joint the nodal angle is directed laterally forward and upward so if you see it from in front the direction of nodal angle is lateral forward and upward now if you see the lateral angle from in front this portion that is the part of the neck of the scapula this portion is devoid of attachment of subscapularis and over here there lies a bursa deep to the tendon of subscapularis which prevents friction similarly posteriorly or dorsally this portion of the neck it is again devoid of attachment of infraspinatus now if we draw an imaginary line extending from suprascapular notch above to the infraglenoid tubercle in front and the same line from infraglenoid tubercle to the suprascapular notch above this continuous line is termed as surgical neck of the scapula just because this portion is more vulnerable for fracture as compared to the anatomical neck the fracture of anatomical neck are very rare now the superior angle is a meeting point of superior border and medial border it is deeply placed and it is covered by trapezius and deep to the trapezius there runs spinal accessory now so two structures are related to it now let's see inferior angle it's a meeting point of thick lateral border and medial border over here and dorsally you can see the triangular flat strip also encroaches the inferior angle so portion of teres major and few slips of latissimus dorsi are attached to it and on the coastal aspect the lower five digitations of the serratus anterior are attached to it the inferior angle is approximately situated at the 7th rib or 7th intercostal space now let's see processes you know there are three processes spinous process acromion process and coracoid process now let's see first the spinous process the spine or spinous process has got an apex a base or lateral border an anterior border which is attached to the dorsal surface a posterior free border which is subcutaneous it is called as crest a superior and an inferior surface the apex is situated at the level of spine of t3 vertebrae and near apex it presents a triangular area over which the lower fibers of trapezius glide and between trapezius and bone there runs a bursa over here 
the base or lateral border it is free and that forms spinoglenoid notch with the glenoidal angle now the posterior border it is also called as crest of the spine it bears two lips upper lip and lower lip the upper lip is continuous with the medial border of acromion process whereas the lower lip is continuous with the lateral border of acromion process so there are two lip upper lip and lower lip of crest of spine of scapula the upper lip along with the medial border of acromion process it provides insertion to middle fibers of the trapezius whereas the lower lip of the crest of the spine it provides origin to posterior fibers of the deltoid now at the commencement of lower lip near apex this portion it is elevated rough and it is called as deltoid tubercle where the lowermost fibers of the trapezius they converge and they are inserted now let's see the acromion process it projects forward as a flattened plate from the lateral end of the spine of the scapula the acromion process has lateral border medial border a tip an acromion angle dorsal surface and under surface the acromion angle is the meeting point of lower lip of crest of spine of scapula with the lateral border so this is acromion angle the tip will be in front that is meeting point of medial and lateral border the dorsal surface is subcutaneous the under surface is related to the tendon of supraspinatus between supraspinatus and the under surface there is subacromial bursa now let's see the medial border it's a continuation of upper lip of crest of spine of scapula and along with the upper lip it is providing attachment to the middle fibers of the trapezius now anteriorly the medial border bears a flat articular surface and that forms acromioclavicular joint with lateral end of clavicle let me join both so you know, this is right clavicle and at the lateral end there is a flat impression and together these two will form plain synovial joint that is acromioclavicular joint now the lateral border of the acromion extends from the acromion angle to its tip and it provides origin to middle fibers of the deltoid now along this border if you closely see you will find four tubercles now these four tubercles are providing attachment to fibrous septa and these fibrous septa in turn will provide origin to the middle fibers of the deltoid so by fibrous septa the surface area will increase and it can accommodate maximum number of muscle fibers so middle fibers of the deltoid is also an example of multipinnate arrangement of the muscle now tip of the coracoid process it provides attachment to a ligament that extends from coracoid process to the acromion process that is termed as coraco acromion ligament and lateral it is attached to the tip whereas medially it is attached to the posterolateral border of the horizontal part of coracoid process the coracoid process has horizontal part and vertical part the horizontal part has posterolateral border so here there will be attachment of coraco acromial ligament so along with the horizontal part coraco acromial ligament and the under surface of the acromion process these three structures are forming a continuous arch and this arch is behaving as a hood like protection for the shoulder joint now let's see coracoid process it's a beak like or bent finger like projection at the junction of superior border and glenoidal angle over here and it resembles like a bent finger like this so it has got lower vertical part like this and upper horizontal part let me correlate this is lower vertical part and upper horizontal part so this is coracoid process it is directed forward and laterally the vertical part is related to subscapularis in front and supraspinatus muscle behind so this is supraspinatus fossa so here will be supraspinatus and this is subscapular fossa so here will be the subscapularis the horizontal part it is directed forward and laterally and it has a tip anteromedial border posteromedial border superior surface 
and inferior surface. The superior surface and adjoining anteromedial border over here. This area provides insertion to pectoralis minor muscle. The rest of the anteromedial border it provides attachment to coracoclavicular ligament, its trapezoid part and conoid part. The posterolateral border it provides attachment to coracohumeral ligament, which extends from coracoid process to the joint capsule of the shoulder joint. And over here, it provides attachment to coracoacromial ligament. So that forms coracoacromial arch. The tip of the coracoid process provides attachment to two muscles, medially to the coracobrachialis and laterally to the short head of biceps brachii. So entire coracoid process provides attachment to three ligaments and three muscles, namely coracoclavicular ligament, its conoid part and trapezoid part, coracohumeral ligament and coracoacromial ligament, whereas three muscles over here will be insertion of pectoralis minor and from tip coracobrachialis and short head of biceps brachii. Now we know the superior surface of the coracoid process provides insertion to pectoralis minor muscle and posterolateral border provides attachment to coracohumeral ligament. So coracohumeral ligament is considered as degenerated part of tendon of pectoralis minor muscle. Now let's see certain important features regarding scapula. Scapula is an example of composite bone and it is formed by fusion of ventral element and dorsal element. The ventral element is represented by coracoid process and tip of the coracoid which is called as epicoracoid whereas dorsal element is represented by rest of the scapula and as a rule the muscles attached to the ventral element to the coracoid process and pre coracoid should be supplied by ventral division of brachial plexus and muscles attached to the dorsal division should be supplied by dorsal division of brachial plexus. But there are three exceptions number one inferior heart. number two trapezius and number three levator scapulae now these muscles are basically belonging to the trunk but functionally they have been shifted or migrated to the pectoral girdle so they are not supplied by brachial plexus now we know the scapula is homologous with the hip bone and hip bone has got three parts ilium ischium and pubis so body of the scapula is homologous with the ilium the coracoid process except tip the coracoid process except tip plus upper one third of the gonadal angle that portion is homologous with the ischium whereas the tip of the coracoid process or the pre coracoid element it is homologous with the pubis now in lower animals like reptiles the coracoid process is a separate bone so it is an example of atavistic epiphysis so this is regarding scapula hope you understood well thanks for watching